Hey folks, welcome to The Artist Craft. I'm your host, Stacey Cochran, and we are joined in studio today by an outstanding author. F. Paul Wilson is the New York Times bestselling author of more than 40 books. His Repairman Jack series of novels has been translated into many languages around the world, and his latest novel, Fatal Error, is the second to the last novel in his very successful series, uh, and he's currently on tour for it. Wilson is a licensed, licensed doctor, and he has written thrillers in virtually every subgenre, from medical thrillers to science fiction thrillers. Uh, he lives in Wall, New Jersey. Thank you very much for joining us oh, in pleasure. the studio today. So tell us a little bit about Fatal Error. What's, what's this story about? Well, it's, as you said, it's the next to last in the series. And um, in the long story arc I've been developing throughout the, the 14 books, this is the 14th, um, we're at a point where it's part of the, the major plot where they want to bring down the internet. And I had to find a way to do it, which, which I, I did. Um, but it's, it's also a personal story. I, you know, I work it into this poor um, uh, Saudi immigrant who is, is being harassed and actually uh, his family has been kidnapped and he's being forced to do a lot of strange, demeaning things. And the question is why and really what's behind it. And Jack, for those who don't know, he's, a, he's an urban mercenary. And he hires out to fix things that society or the system can't fix, or if the problem happens to be the system. And in this case, this guy is warned not to call the police or something awful will happen to his son and wife. And he happens to know someone who happens to know Jack, and they get put together. So how do you feel about the series coming to an end? You're, you're on, the, on tour for the second to the last book. It's, in a way, it's scary because Jack has sort of taken over my career, which is really why I didn't want to do a series. In, I wrote the first book in 84 and didn't write the second book until 1998, so it was a 14-year gap. Um, because I knew, after I wrote the first book, that this, this is a series character. And I knew people would want me to write more. And I just decided I'm not ready for a series. Um, so the thing is, the book, the first book is The Tomb, and it never went out of print. So his fan base is growing and growing. And at first, there used to be letters. And then when the internet came in, then it started being emails. Um, and so I was in a contract for a multi-book contract that I I really was tired of writing the medical thrillers that I was contracted for, and I had this idea for a book that was sort of a techie type of thriller, and Jack would have been the perfect protagonist. I said, here's a way to bring him back for one book, and I would just have a doctor hire him, so therefore it would be a medical thriller, at least by, you know, uh, officially, and it really went over big. And so I said, I'll do one more. So I did conspiracies. And I had such a ball doing conspiracies that I said, you know what? Let me try it, and I'll, I'm going to do a few more, and a few more, and a few more. But uh, the big arc that I've been building has accrued such mass now. I always approach it as a closed-end series. But I thought maybe I would go 20, 18, 20 books, and by now, it has gotten to the point where really I, I'll just be stringing the readers along if I keep going. And I don't want to do that. I mean, I, I think I have a very focused series. Every book is pointing toward the next. And um, just to mark time and tread water just so I can get a few more books out there, I don't feel that's, that's, that's fair to the series. So I'm just going to end it. Mm, fair enough. Well, again, the author is F. Paul Wilson. The book that he's on tour for right now is Fatal Error. It's part of uh, the Repairman Jack series of novels. Uh, so how has the fan response been to the end of the series? Are, are they... Agonized. Yeah. <laughs> um, I expected some uh, regrets from people, but, but I'm really taken and... and pleasantly taken by how much is he's become a part of people's lives. I mean, they, they tell me I, every fall I wait for a new...
Superman Jack novel. And they, they thought it was going to go on forever. And uh, unfortunately, it can't. It can't go on forever with because we've all fell, fallen in love with a series of, of novels about a certain character. And we, so many of them go beyond their due date, you know, their expiration date, when you, you should have, there's that jump the shark period, or the, the, period, the, the point where you realize, oh, I've read this before. You know, he's, he's recycling the other ideas. And so, this is a big part of my opus vitae, and I don't want it, you know, I don't want, I want to go out on a high note. So, um, I will probably, um, the publisher wants it, and the readers want it. I'll probably do some, maybe three books earlier in his career, um, before the tomb, how he becomes who he is. Uh, so I won't have to deal with stretching out right. the big story arc. So those would be just strictly crime novels. And a lot of readers really like the fixits, where he goes in, he's he's given a problem, and he goes and fixes. That's how he got the name Repairman. Sure, because he fixes things. Situations. Speaking of, of how he goes in, uh, in Fatal Error, uh, you know, he intervenes on behalf of, of Munir Habib, uh, whose family uh, has been kidnapped, which you, which you said. Uh, how would you describe uh, Jack? But he's somewhat reluctant in the book. He's, at first, he, he's reluctant, and I, I sense that that's probably the case in a lot of the stories in the series. How would you describe Jack's criteria for intervening on behalf of someone? Well, at this point, he doesn't think he's the best man for the job. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, you, you, they have to find out who this guy is who's done the kidnapping. And for that, you need resources. He's one guy. And so you need people who are combing through the databases of the company this guy works for. Maybe it's somebody he fired. Maybe it's somebody he didn't hire. He needs a lot of eyeballs and a lot of paper shufflers. And Jack doesn't have that. He's, he's a one-man show. And essentially, the other part is that sooner or later he figures if he can't do it and he doesn't think he can, the feds are going to be involved. Now, Jack is a career criminal in the sense that he has no identity, he lives completely under the radar, he does not have a social security number, he has never paid taxes, never filled out a 1040. So. As soon as officialdom comes around, he fades away. So he knows the feds are going to get involved eventually. And so if he gets involved, he's just putting himself in jeopardy. So for those two reasons, he, he says, you know, somebody else can do a better job. You need, you need a whole bunch of people working on this. And so he backs away. But um, certain dramatic events happen that pull him back in. And he just decides, well, I... I can't let this go, you know, I, I have to help this guy. So um, he, he does get involved and it turns, in, turns out, as it often does in the books, that what's involved, what Nier is involved in is also part of the bigger shadow war that he's become involved mm -hmm. in. So is it ultimately compassion? Is it ultimately that ingredient that... Yeah, he, he, cons he likes to consider himself a small businessman who doesn't get involved emotionally, but he always gets involved emotionally. So, I mean, I think that's part of his appeal is that um, he takes it personally. And he also has this code that once he starts it, he will finish it. Um, so, and I think that's something that separates him from a lot of the criminals he deals with. So he's, a lot of, he, he's not a crime fighter. His, some of his best friends are criminals. So he's not a Batman type of thing where he's out there to, um, or the shadow, you know, to the weed of crime bears bitter fruit and all that. He, um, he's very much a pragmatist and a realist and can be very violent when he's crossed uh, or if you get his vengeance up um, you, you don't want to be on that side of them. Hmm. The author is F. Paul Wilson. The book we're talking about is Fatal Error, which is on Tor Forts available everywhere, uh, and is part of the Repairman Jack series of novels. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about writing process. How long did it take to, to write Fatal Error? Well, Fatal Error took a little longer than usual because I had to find a way to bring down the internet. And um, 
first of all, I had to study the Internet to find it, because I mean, I'm on it every day and I really don't know how it works. And mo I'm sure most of us don't know how it works. Um, that little, when you hit enter, where does that little packet of electrons sure. go and how does it get around and so on. So in order to figure out how to destroy that, uh, I had to learn all about it. And the more I learned, the more daunting the task seemed because the internet is so big, it's so redundant, and there's so many safeguards that it's almost, it's almost impossible to bring down. You, I mean, the infrastructure, um, is very redundant. The fiber optic cables are going this way and that way. You have networks of networks who are all interconnected to each other. So if you can't go from here to here, you can go from here to here and still wind up over there. So it was Michael Jackson that, that came up with the solution for me, which is very strange. Interesting. To say, how, how, how does that segue work? <laughs> um, I was researching this when he died. Hmm. And Google came to a almost complete stop. I mean, I would put something into Google, and I'd sit there and wait and wait and wait, and nothing came up, because I'm always using Google to look up things. Um, and then I went over to Twitter, and Twitter was down. And it was all because of people had heard the rumor that Michael Jackson had died. Hmm. And all over the world, wow. they're searching for confirmation, or once I get it, they're searching for, you know, just let me, let me go see that Beat It video again. Mm. And the, Google and Twitter thought they were under what they call a DDoS attack, which is a dedicated denial of service, where a whole bunch of computers will flood a server or a website with data, requests, um, anything. And actually burn out the routers. Well, they don't really burn out, but they, they crash. Mm -hmm. And um, actually there was someone named Anonymous who was doing that to the Scientology servers not too long ago, and they just caught him. They, they managed to track him down. But he would crash the servers day after day. Every time they put it back up again, he'd crash them. Um, and that's, all, that's been a concern with the internet is, is bandwidth. And that's why there's these, these tier pricing programs they're putting out that if you're a high bandwidth user, um, they're going to charge you more than for the person who just sends email. Uh, and, I was, and I put it all together and I said, I have a way of doing it. And so I put it out of my newsletter, and it was, it was kind of an odd request, I said, but anybody who works in the internet or in IT, um, I want to bring down the internet, contact me, you know. I'm, fictionally, I want to bring down the internet. Uh, and a, a, a bunch of my readers got in touch with me, and I used about half a dozen of them, and we went over various scenarios, and they all said, you really can't bring it down for the very reason everybody is so redundant. I said, what if I did this? And every one of them said, yeah, that'll work. That would work. But I'm not telling you because you have to read the book. Why not? So there was a lot of research that went into... So this book took longer, yeah. ...to figuring out. Now, when you're revising, do you, revi do you like labor over a chapter before moving on to the next one, or do you move pretty swiftly through the first draft of a novel? No, I'm very strict on never looking back. I'll look back to see the color of somebody's eyes or something like that if I need to know it. Mm -hmm. But um, I do a certain number of pages every day, minimum. If I'm rolling, I keep going. But... I will struggle to get a, that certain minimum every day if, I, if I'm having a tough time. Mm -hmm. But narrative momentum in my books and, is very important to me. And almost invariably, people say they can't put the book down. And I think one of the reasons is, is that I just I plow through that first draft and, and get it down. And later on, I can backfill. I can expand the character. By the end of the book, I know my characters a lot better than I did at the beginning. Um, and, the, and secondary characters are very important in the series because everybody knows you're not going to, I'm not going to kill Jack and I'm not going to kill his girlfriend or, or her daughter. I think they're staples of the city. But, um, so I do, cre I do work on secondary characters. I do my damnedest to make you care about them and then I may or may not kill them. So uh, that leaves people, as you know, people who read me, just know that really nobody is safe and who's going to live and who's going to survive 
Um, I have a, a recurring character named Wheezy. She comes from his, his childhood. And I just, I just, somebody just posted on a website and said, oh, I just finished Fatal Era. Wheezy survived another book. <laughs> you know, so I'm so <laughs> glad. So I have sort of built up this reputation with the readers that, you know, nobody is safe. Um, but I think the time for editing, rather than make sure the final chapter, the chapter I did before is perfect and then moving on, you know, I know there are mistakes. I just, I just keep going. Hmm. Now, once the manuscript is done uh, and you've done a revision on your own and you've worked through it on your own, uh, how many back and forth do you typically have with your publisher? Well, first I go to beta readers. I have three beta readers who see it after I say, okay, it's good enough for somebody to read it. Mm -hmm. And I, I send it out to them, and they know, are, and one or two of them, and one of them is another writer, and I do it with his books. Mm -hmm. And we, we have a deal, you can't hurt my feelings. You know, I want the book to be better, and they, they like to read the type of books I write. So um, they like to read thrillers and such. And so, that's the rule. You can't hurt my feelings. So anything you don't like, say it. And if you, ha and if you have a, a way to fix it, even better. Um, and it just with the new book, uh, The Dark at the End, uh, which is the last book in the series, um, both of them came back at me that I had a very smart character do a very dumb thing. Mm. And I hadn't seen it. And I, once they said to me, I said, oh yeah, jeez, how did that slip by? But, you know, as, as the writer, you're, you're concentrating on the leaves as you go by, sure. and then you don't realize you haven't put a branch there. So that's something. very helpful. So you've oh, got a good group yeah. of, a writing group of stuff. Yeah, and you have to, and the thing is, I don't have to necessarily do what they say, um, but when two out of the three say it, then I say there's something wrong. Yeah, there might be something there. Yeah, and, and you know, I don't get these writers who, who think that, you know, if, if, if people, have a problem with their book that it's you know the reader's problem I mean it's my job to make it clear what I want to say and if you have trouble understanding it and you have trouble understanding it, and you have trouble understanding it well you know it's probably my fault mm -hmm. so I want to know those things beforehand sure. I want to fix them beforehand mm -hmm. well the author is F Paul Wilson the book that he's on tour for right now is is fatal error it's part of the repairman Jack series of novels. Uh, it's available everywhere. Check it out. So let's, let's dig into the past a little bit. When did you first know that you wanted to be a writer? Oh boy. Way back. Um, I remember back in second grade I, I was writing stories. Um, not finishing them, as, you know, but actually starting stories and writing them. And um, I remember actually there was a point in second grade where they had different levels of readers in the second grade. We'd have mm -hmm. our, all our little groups. And I remember, and we, I think it was a Dick and Jane type of thing, but I was saying, can I, said, I wrote a story, can I read my story? And I'd only written half the story. And I, I'd only re I really didn't expect her to say yes, but she said yes, you know, sure, sure Paul, go ahead, read your story. And so it was, a, of course, it was a haunted house or something like that. And I got halfway through it. Well, I got all the way through what I'd written, but it was half the story. And then I started ad living. And yeah, she picked up on that. She said, Well, Paul, you know, when you finish the story, we'd love to hear the rest of it. Hmm. Um, and so we're all putting our chairs back, and I'm, I'm like, Oh, boy, I got caught. And I'm feeling really like embarrassed. And kids are coming up to me and and say, well, what happened next? What about the guy with the bow and arrow? What, what, what happened? And, it, you know, I've never injected heroin, but I, I think that's what it's like. I mean, it was just like this tremendous high, you know. I have them. They're mine. And I, that's why I consider myself a storyteller. I don't really mm -hmm. consider myself a writer uh, as such. Um, I just love to tell a story. And so story is my, my prime thing. Uh, Characters, language, they are all tools for me to tell my story. They are not the end, they're just the means. Whereas with a writer, you know, language can be actually almost the end, you know, writer with a capital W, um, or, or character can, can, can be the end, 
But for me, it, it's story. And anything that serves a story, I'll do. So what makes for a great ending to a story? Well, if you're telling it right, and I think you have to know the ending before you begin. I, I was quite an outliner when I started out um, because I was a part-time writer and not being able to finish a, story, a, a novel would be like the worst uh, thing I could imagine. I was, I was sitting on a panel with Robert McCammon once and just before the thing began, you know, he was, I was saying, what are you working on? He says, oh, I just threw away 300 pages or something. I did. It just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And I'm sitting there, 300 pages, my God. And he could do 300 pages in no time. And you know, for me, it was like, that would, that would be like a catastrophe. So, um, but he hadn't really worked it out. And I, so if you're telling a story, that there's drama, there's conflict, but you're building up all this tension or you should be, and dramatic tension. And you really need to blow that off. And, and one, one of the things, that's me, I was a biology major in college, but I did so well in my, my English boards that they put me in honors English, and I wound up in a Greek drama course. I said, what am I doing in a Greek drama course? I want to know. I'm a pre-med major here, um, biology major. But it really was one of the best things that ever happened to me because I learned about catharsis. And uh, that always stuck with me, that you, you build up the tension and then you blow it off. And I mean, how many books have you read where three quarters of the way through, it's been great. And then all of a sudden it starts to fumble and stumble. And that's, I think it's because, and then it, instead of ending with a bang, it ends with a whimper. And I, that's because the, the, the writer really didn't have the ending in mind when mm. he started off. I mean, you can, and the thing is, when I used to outline, I would put the outline in a drawer, but it was in my head. But the thing is, I would have to turn here, and I'd turn here, and turn there. So I had a different path, but I always knew where I was going. And so everything built towards that. And so that, that's the kind of story when you close it up, you say, ah, oh, now that was good. Because there's a symmetry to it. And that's what fiction, I think, does to the chaos of reality. It imposes a symmetry on it. And so not all the ends are tied up, but you can see there is a shape to the events. And that's why stories are unsatisfying. That's why you know, guys sat around campfires and, and told stories, because it's, it's satisfying. It's not the chaos out there. You know, the good guy won. The bad guy lost. I mean, it doesn't always happen that way, but if, if it does happen the other way around, there's a reason for it. It doesn't just happen. Mm. This is great advice. You definitely need to know your ending, it sounds like, or have an idea of it before you, before you even begin, which is great advice. Again, the author is F. Paul Wilson. The book that he's on tour for right now is Fatal Error. It's part of the Repairman Jack series of novels. Uh, so I, in doing research for this, I saw or found that your first couple of published short stories uh, were The Cleaning Machine and Rat Man, which goes back a few years to 1971. Uh, and then your first novel was Healer, is that right? Yeah. In 76. 76. What was the writing process like then? You were writing on a typewriter, presumably, or were you? Yeah, what? I was writing on an Olympia portable and um, using tons of whiteout because I was a terrible typist. And, you know, it was. The funny thing about the cleaning machine, uh, that was my first published story. It was my second sale. Ratman was my first sale, but it was published like two months later. But um, the cleaning machine was published in this little magazine called um, Startling Suspense Stories. And preceding me had been a fellow named Greg Bear and another fellow named uh, Stephen King. They published one original short story every issue, and then all the rest were reprints from weird tales. So well, when I, my story was published, the magazine folded. And I was supposed to get paid on a publication. Well, I didn't get paid. But it was okay. I had the magazine. I was a published author. Um, and then a few years later, I was at a signing, and this fellow comes up with this 
sort of like a comic book type of magazine. And he says, would you sign this? I said, I'd never seen it before. I said, I don't have anything in that. He said, oh yeah, you do. I said, what? He said, he opens it up, and it was called The Machine then. Hmm. And they had pirated The Cleaning Machine, not because it was such a great story, but it had just the right word count, because you had to have a certain num amount of prose to keep a third class or a fourth class mailing privileges. So they had pirated, so I, my first story had been printed twice without me getting paid once. So it was one of those ironic things. The only time, I, the first time I got paid for is when I put it in one of my collections. Then I finally got paid for it. But that's why writers go crazy. You know. What a great story though, you know. And, and perseverance is definitely key. So, so what kind of, uh, what, what was the experience like getting your first novel published, Healer, you know, which was a few years after that? Yeah, well, it's, people, a lot of people get mad at me because I've, I've really, I've had it easy. And I don't have really hard tales to tell. Um, I wrote a story named called Pard, and it was published in Analog um, Science Fiction. And so I decided that the story I'd always continued uh, uh, intended to continue it. So I, I took Pard. It was bought by John Campbell, published in in Analog Magazine, and he's the father of science fiction, modern science fiction. And he actually taught me how to write in a way. I mean, he. He actually, when he rejected my stories, he would tell me why he was rejecting them. Everyone else would just send me a printed slip. Sorry, this is not suitable for our needs at this time. But he would say, you know, with the cleaning machine, he rejected it. He said, this is not a story. This is a vignette. A story has a beginning, middle, and end. Send me a story. So I looked up vignette because I had no idea what it was, and I found out it's just the situation. Um, but then I took part, and I did an outline of where I was going to take it as a novel. And I said, where am I going to send it? Well, Asimov is published by Doubleday, so I'll send it to Doubleday. So I send it, send it off to Doubleday. Three months later, they accept it. And I said, is this what always happens? Is this how it's done? You send it off and they buy it. Uh, but later on, I was talking to the, the editor, and she said, well, the, the no novelette that you were starting it with had been bought and published by John Campbell, which gave you instant credibility, and, you know, and, and we liked it. I said, but boy, that's, that's great. <laughs> you know, that's, but most people submit you know, book after book after book, uh, uh, like Joe Conrath. He, he told me he submitted eight books before he made his first sale. But you've got you know, to be, you gotta, I would have kept it up anyway. But uh, I, I was just very lucky, and that just started off my career. Perseverance is the yeah. name of the game. Well, the author, again, is, is F. Paul Wilson. The book that he's on tour for right now is Fatal Error. Uh, it's part of the Repairman Jack series of novels, and we're just about out of time for today's episode. For all of us here at The Artist Craft, I'm your host, Stacey Cochran. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. That went fast. It flies by, doesn't it? Oh, I thought we were like at the 15-minute mark yeah, or something. I could have probably, and I had enough questions to go on.